okay, I've decided to make this solely about answering the questions. So 1.8, I'm going to work backwards in chapter 1. If we look, this is how they describe a transformation. It looks weird. However, this is how you'll often see it in an equation. So the first step is spot the parent function. Well, the clue right here is the squared. So we know we're not dealing with a growth, an absolute, a, a, a radical, reciprocal. This looks like if I get rid of all the numbers, what am I left with? Well, let's see. It looks like a parabola. So my parent function is a parabola. So immediately I should study the parabola. And the parabola's main three points, which are, and if you don't know this, you can just punch it into y is equal to x squared. But the main three points are this. Main five points, but you don't have to use five points. You can use three points. And those are the ones that we would change and alter. So you always have to know your parent function. And then you have to understand these transformations. So the ones in green are y transformations. They do exactly what you would expect. So over here in green, here's a 5. That's a y transformation. And a minus 7. Which means I would multiply all my y values over here, right here on the right, by 5. And then subtract 7. Let's do that now. What's 4 times 5? 20 minus 7, 13. So the 4 changes into a 13, and I'm just going to put it way over to the right. What's 1 times 5? Five? 5 minus 7 minus 2. What's 0 times 5? 0 minus 7 is minus 7. What's the 1 times 5? Five? 5 minus 7 minus 2 again. What's the 4 times 5? 20 minus 7, 13 again. So you notice there's a repeat just as there is in a normal parabola. Now, the stuff in red, which we'll always find right beside x, is our x transformations. And they're a little trickier. They do the opposite. So, for instance, if you see a 5 here for k, you're actually going to con consider it as the reciprocal, 1 over 5. If you see a 1 over 5 here in front of x, you're actually going to consider it the reciprocal, 5. If you see x minus 3 here, it's actually not moving left to the 3, it's moving right to the 3. So it kind of does the opposite. All x um, transformations do the opposite. And that's the only hard thing you got to keep in mind. So looking over at this one, I can, it looks like everything should be multiplied by 2 and then subtract 3, doesn't it? But it's actually the opposite. This is actually a compression of a half. So you take the reciprocal of 2 over 1, which is 1 over 2. And it's actually a translation to the right by 3, which means I multiply all my x values by 2 and then add 3 to them. So let's go back and look at all these x values. So minus 2, I've got to multiply by a, uh, by a half. Minus 2 divided by a half is minus 1. And then I've got to add 3 to it, it's 2. Next one's a little trickier because it's a, it's a 1. But when I multiply 1 by a half, I get negative a half. And then when I add 3 to it, I get positive 2.5. Next one, when I multiply by half, is 0. And when I add 3 to it, I get 3. And then I get 2.5 again. And then I get uh, 2 again. So 2. Oh, no, actually 2 is even, this is even 1 times a half is a half. And then when I add uh, 3 to it, 3.5. And then finally for this one, when I uh, multiply by a half, I get 1. When I add 3 to it, it's 4. So now, if I want to show you in Desmos what those transformations look like. And by the way, Desmos can handle both of them. So here's the parent function, right? And here's the um, adjusted function that I just did. So I think it was 5, 2, x minus 3, all of it uh, inside squared. Uh, and then, uh, hang on, I think it was more like this. There we go all of it squared, and then subtract 7. Let me just make sure I have that right. 5, 2, 3, minus 3, and 7. Yeah, it's like that. Now, according to me, all these points that I've just adjusted should be exactly on the graph. So I'm on my blue graph. So I'm going to do it. Looks good so far. Just did that one. Oh, I forgot the three. It doesn't matter if I go in order. Actually, I'll just keep it in order. I'll do this. 
and I'll do three comma minus seven. That should be the vertex, yeah. And then the last one, four comma 13, and label. Now I'm gonna turn off my parent, I'm gonna enlarge this, I'm gonna turn off my parent graph. And sure enough, those new points are exactly where I expect them to be. Where's the other one? Way up there. And those are my new translated points. So if I didn't have the graph drawn, if I didn't have the graph drawn, I could plot those points and then just join them like a parabola. Notice how it seems to be vertically stretched. Well, that's actually that horizontal compression. Both are going on. It's vertically stretched by five, and then that horizontal compression makes it seem even thinner. Watch what happens when I remove the two. See, fatter. So you, if this was a stretch, it would get fatter. Whereas if I put one over five here, you can see it gets fatter because then it becomes a stretch. So the X transformations do the opposite, but notice my translation methods work perfectly. Then I'm just gonna turn off these uh, points that I've made. Uh, so normally what you do is you would just plot these new points and then join them with a parabola line, like start up here and foam, foam there. Always label them and then you'll get full marks for the graphing. Also show which translations you did and why, just as I just did. Now there's another thing I wanna show you. I can get rid of G of X, but I'll just keep it around. H of X is capable of translating F of X up above in the same way. So I put the two here, two there, two there. Now, let's see if I can just get a tab to two. No, it's not doing two. Let's see if I can just, maybe I can put it in front of the X. And then I do X minus three. And I don't need the squared because it's already there. And see if I got the same graph. And I did. So I wrote it exactly as the translation is by telling it uh, translate the f of x up here like this. And it doesn't matter what I put in for f of x up here. It'll do this translation or whatever f of x up here. So if I do square root of uh, x, it'll do, the trans do all these translations to this function up here using the way it's written right here with f of x. But this is the formulaic way, and this is the transformation sort of way. It says take of f of x, take f of x, whatever f of x is, and translate it. All right, let's move into it. You should also always take a picture of your summaries at the end, which kind of explains all the transformations going on. And here we go. And you also have to be, described, be able to describe it in words. So I'm going to just keep that in case i got to ref reference it again. And describe in words what's going on. So A, what is that? So that's in front. If it was near the X, it would be inside the square root. Clearly, this is a square root function. And the 5 is outside. So I'm going to label my green stuff in my Y transformations in green and my X transformations in red. And you might say, what's that minus do? That that's beside the X, so it causes a reflection in the Y axis. You'll get used to that. Uh, we'll get more into it, but you still treat it like one third, except now I would multiply all my X values by negative one third. And I would, instead of subtracting two, I would add two of them. But the Y values, exactly what you see, what you get. So I would multiply all my Y values by five and uh, add four to them. In other words, it's a stretch of a factor of five on the y values and translation up by four. So if I'm gonna identify A, that's a stretch and it's a vertical stretch because it's y. So all y stretches are vertical. And it's um, a stretch, there we go, vertical stretch. Now, if I'm going to identify, and I'll just use black from now on. If I'm gonna identify B, that's just pointing to the negative. So that's a reflection. And it, because it's beside the x, it's a reflection in the x-axis, y-axis rather, which means all the x values go from positive to negative or negative to positive, which is why they're flip-flopping through the y-axis. All right, uh, you can see this easily in Desmos. If you pull up Desmos and you just put in, let's say I'm gonna put in this Cartesian coordinate. All right, what happens if I multiply the x value by minus one? even though I'm changing the X value, you're gonna see it reflected through the Y axis on this other side. So I'm gonna change this to a positive three. Boom, it 
jumped through the y-axis. So a negative value on the x, when I changed it to positive, reflected in the y-axis. Same with the 4. If I change this to negative, it's going to, it's by the y, so it's going to reflect in the x-axis. Watch it jump down in quadrant 4. See? That's a reflection in the x-axis, even though I put a negative by the y value. Okay. What about this uh, 3? So this 3 is not a stretch, it's a compression because it's 1 third. So that would be described as a compression. And it's affecting the x, so it's horizontal compression by a factor of 1 third. This other one would have been factor of 5. Okay, what about um, D? Well, that's not 2 to the left, that's 2 to the right. So we're talking a horizontal translation 2 to the right. And finally, what plus 4, that's a y transformation. What you see is what you get. So y's are vertical. Translation up by 4. Great. Match each of the operations. Let's see what this question actually asks. And I might not do all the graphing, by the way. Um, match each of the operation uh, to one of the transformations for question 2. Divide the x coordinates by 3. So if this 3 becomes a third, I would actually divide everything by 3 or multiply it by 1 third. I like multiplying by 1 third. Later on, you'll realize why. So that's related to C. This one here is C. Multiply y coordinates by 5. Well, that's right there. So that was part of A. So I'm going to do this just like that. And then multiply the x coordinates by minus 1. That's this B thing. It's the reflection in the uh, y axis. So that's B. And then add 4 to the y coordinates. That's there. So that was E. And add 2 to the x coordinates. That's there. Those are the things you have to do to the x, y. Here's another thing. You always do the multiplication to the y's or the divisions to the y's and the x's. First of all, I always do y first. So when you do that, you, you multiply 5 first and then add 4. Don't add 4 and then multiply by 5. You must do the multiplication first, then add. And then same for the x's. I have to divide by minus 3 first and then add 2. Complete the table. So this is beside the x. So that means I divide all my x values by 3. So it'll be 1 third. And there's no y transformation. 1 third comma 1. This says I do the same thing as there, but now I multiply it by minus, I divide it by minus 3. So it's negative 1 third, comma 1. This has 2, so notice we're sort of bouncing each time. So I keep the negative third x, nothing more happens. But that 5 is outside the f, that's a y transformation, which means I just multiply my y values by 5. So I get negative third, comma 5. Now. After I've multiplied, divide by negative 3, I have to add 2. So I have to add 2 to this negative third, which becomes 1 and 2 thirds, which becomes, let's see, 5 thirds positive, because I added 2, comma, 5. But now look, I've also multiplied by 5, the, the y value, but I'm now also adding 4, so this 5 becomes 9. So the final translation, they're kind of taking you transformation bit by bit is 5 over 3 comma 9. And we could easily see this by putting an f of x that has 1 comma 1 and then putting this final transformation and we should end up with these coordinates. And actually let's see if that happens. Uh, a parabola would have 1 comma 1. There we go. Now I'm going to put in all those translations. Cancel. And all those translations were 5 outside, minus 3, minus 2, and plus 4. Let's see if I got them correct, though. I think it was plus 4 outside. Yeah, plus 4, minus 3 in front, not minus 2, minus 2 in the middle, and plus 4. Okay, now the big question is, will I see this coordinate, which is... 5 thirds comma 9. And then sure enough, look at that. 
And you might say, well, wait, it was over here at one comma one on the it was over here at one comma one on the purple one. So let's see if we can see one comma one right there. How did it end up? It's on the right side of the parabola. How did it end this transformation end up on the left side? Well, this minus here reflected in the y-axis, and this y-axis is essentially the axis of symmetry. It's not always the y-axis. It's whatever the reflection is. So here's the, here's the parabola's vertex. If I put a line through there, you'll see that it jumped from here. There's an equivalent spot over here, 1.667 comma 9, or sorry, 2.33 comma, comma 9, somewhere in there. And that negative here made it jump through this axis of symmetry to the other side. But you'll see that I nailed the, the value. And we can do that, uh, this transformation like this, or we can also do it like this. We can just say use the, the F above, and we would put the square here. I think we'd have to put the, yeah, we'd have to put the negative three in here, and like that, and there. We get the same transformation. I think I got it, minus three and minus two. 5 plus 4, I think I got it. And we see the same transformation. Okay. Now they want you to practice more and more. So the first step is always identify your parent graph. That's always your first step. Get more to these in a second. And know three or five points on your parent graph. So this is clearly uh, they're saying, they're not even giving us a graph. They're just saying, what happens when I do this to whatever function this was? Okay. I'm going to identify the X transformations. There are none. I'm going to identify the Y transformations in green. There. So, in words, this is a vertical stretch. by a factor of 3, and a vertical translation down by 1. What do I do the actual y values? I multiply them by 3, and then subtract 1. What you see is what you get for y transformations. How do I know these are y transformations? They're nowhere near that x. What about this one? Well, clearly there's something right beside the x, and then something that's not. So. I'm going to identify the y transformations. There's only one. And I'm going to trans uh, identify the x transformations. Boom. Let me describe those in words. First, the y transformations. There's a vertical translation down by 5. Now the x transformation. There's a compression, not a stretch, by a factor of 1 half. What do I do? All y values, you simply subtract uh, 5. And all x values, you simply multiply by a half or divide by 2. But there's a reason I like multiplying by a half because it makes um, rearranging these formulas easier later on. So you get faster and faster. It doesn't matter what function this is, that's how those translations will apply. And that's the nice thing is about functions is they all follow the same rules of translation. Now I'm going AC, whatever, but that's okay. I'm going to identify the Y transformations in green. That's outside the F, so it's a Y. That's outside this little brackets in here. Anything inside the brackets would be an X, so now I can see that there's one X right there. In words, let me describe the, um, the Y transformations. A vertical that's less than 1, so it's a compression by a factor of 2 thirds, and a vertical translation up by 1. Excuse the spelling errors. What about the what would that mean? I multiply all y values by 2 thirds, then add 1. And then I'll get the new y values. What about the x translations? We only have the run in red, it's a horizontal translation. To 3 to the left. What does that mean in terms of x values? Take all x values and subtract 3. So you actually do what the 
interpretation is, not what's written in the formula. What about this one? Okay, I'm going to identify the same method. I'm going to identify all the Y's. And at any time, you can stop and test yourself. Stop the video and test yourself. So here's the, all the Y transformations. <clears throat> here's all the X transformations. I can tell because the Y is outside, or the 3 is outside, and the 2 is inside the bracket. So that's a vertical translation. Yeah, never mind about the spelling. Up by 3. So I would simply take all Y values and add 3 to them. And then there's a horizontal translation to, to the right, not left. So take all X values and add 2. What about this one? Okay, so I'm going to identify all Y transformations. You said why? You said that's a reflection in the X axis. Yes, but it's a Y transformation. So that means I have a reflection. That negative is written like this. Oh, I forgot to identify the um, X uh, transformations. Okay, so that means that for the Y transformation, I have a reflection in the X axis. What does that mean? Multiply all y values by minus 1. Then I have a horizontal translation 2 down. So then subtract 2 from all the y values that you first multiplied by minus 1. So you have to multiply by minus 1 first, then subtract the 2. What about the x transformations? Well, the x transformations, this is a stretch because that's less than 1, and we have to flip it, which is 2 over 1. So that's a stretch. Stretch horizontal, a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, which means multiply all your x values of your original parent function by 2. And that's, that's all there is to it. Okay. And what's left? That one. So I'm just going to go faster. <coughs> Pardon me. There's my Y's. And there's my only X. So that's a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. And a vertical translation down by 4, which means multiply all your Y values by 4. And then subtract 4. And this, vertical, this reflection is simply a reflection in the Y axis, which also means multiply all your X values by minus 1. That's because 1 minus 1, when I take the reciprocal, is still 1 over minus 1. It's still minus 1. So minus just kind of stays the minus. Okay, then it says stretch all these functions on the same set of axes. So it wants to do these as we go. Or sketch, rather. Okay. And they want you to do it on the same thing. So the best thing... I hope you have graph paper because it's it's really good to have graph paper always and you should I'm just gonna move this to the side a bit and get there we go maybe zoom out a bit good sometimes you'll have to use more um, and you can change the units to do so but I should keep a nice piece of graph paper handy at all times and that's just to keep your squares um, uniform okay let's look at this one we'll try to graph it notice they give you the parent graph each time okay my parent graph I happen to know is 0 0 what if I can just put an X on the spots here we go yeah, it looks dumb. Maybe a dot. Close. Eh, I'll just sketch it. It'll be rough drawing it because it always is. So I put a dot at 0, 0. Helps if you label them 2, minus 1, minus 1, 2, comma 4. So way up here. And minus 2, comma 4. And I'll leave the parent graph in black. And it's essentially this. And a bit more squished bad drawing but there you go 
Now, what happens with this one? Well, all the y values, you might say, oh, that's by the x. But no, if it was near the, by the x, it would be 3x squared, like that. But it's not. The bracket, it's outside the bracket. They just don't bother using a bracket. Um, but if it was an x, it would have a bracket, and the square would be outside. OK, so that means I multiply all my y values by 3. Well, this one stays the same. Sometimes they do. But this y value, is, I can see, is 1. So when I multiply by 3, I'll do it in red. So it goes here. This is the main one. This one, when I multiply by 3, goes to here. When I multiply this one by 3, it goes by here. And these I can't quite get on the graph, because 3 times 4 is 12, and that's way up there. But that's OK. I can now label those. Minus 1, comma 3. 0, 0, and 1, comma, 3 right over here. And you would just label them, and then you would draw your new graph. You're going to see that it's very thin because it got vertically stretched by a factor of 3. And then the next one, uh, it looks like we've got a combination of things. All the y values have to be multiplied by 3, and then you add 1. And the only x transformation is I have to add 2 to the x value. So let's just take the, the, the parent coordinates. Here's the original parent coordinates. We're going to make a list of everything we do to the y value. So we have to multiply all the y values. Let's do the x values. There's only one. Add 2 to x. Let's do all the y values over here. Multiply all the y values. Always multiply first by 3. Then add 1. OK. So if I multiply all my x values, they become this. By uh, when I Sorry, when I add 2 to them, they become this. There we go. So now they go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when I multiply all my y values by 3 and then add 1, so I get 12, so 4 becomes 13. Uh, 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. 0 times 3 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times, again, I get 1 again, so it becomes 4. And then I get 4 again, so it becomes 13. And finally, I have these coordinates. Because this was 0, 0 became 2, 1. That should be the vertex. That should be the new vertex. And as you can see, I can't quite graph it on here for the high numbers here. But I can do the 1, 4, which is here. And I would label it. I can do the 2, 1, which is here. And I can label it. I can do the 3, 4, which is here. And I can label it. And then the 13s are way up there. And then if I were to sketch it, I can still get an OK sketch out of this. There. You'll notice that you can tell from the vertex, which went to the right by 2. And then you say, why did it only go up by 1? Because when we multiplied 3 times the vertex of 0, we, nothing happened. Then we added 1. So that's why the vertex ended up there, translated or transformed over to there. So there's how you do it for all of this. I don't think I'm going to do all of them. But I will show you how to do the how to start with the various parent, parent functions, right? Great. Whoop. Let's redo that. Don't know how I lost my uh maybe I still yeah, I still have it. Good. Okay, let's look at the next one. So see if you can spot the parent function. It's obviously square root, right? So we need to know the basics of the square root. Well, the square root one in black has a coordinate here. It's 0, 0, then 1, 1. And the best one to use is 4, 2. And then there's even a 9, 3. How do I know that? And then you can do it like this. This is how you would sketch this. Oh, 
almost 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 there not quite I have to do it a little bit higher there we go a little bit lower there that was very that one's very close okay how do I know that well if you're ever stuck make a tea table put a couple values here for X Next, just put the formula over here for y so that you know what to do to y and just pick a couple values now obviously I can't do square roots of negative numbers so I'm just gonna go with 0 1 and why do I jump to 4 because 4 has a nice square root why do I jump to 9 because 9 has a nice square root so what's the square root of 0 0 what's the square root of 1 1 what's the square root of 4 2 and what's the square root of 9? 3. So there you go. I got four nice points on this graph. Let's look at each transformation. All right. This one. I can see this one. The 3 is right beside the x. So that means I take all my x values and I divide them by 3. Now, a little bit hard because they're not uh, easily dividable by 3. But what I'll do is I'll just put them each over a fraction of 3. So if I were to make it, and the y values don't change because there's no y transformation. So I keep all the same y values like that. And all my x values, I simply say, okay, all my x values, I'm going to divide them by 3. What's 0 divided by 3? 0. And I just got to go up a bit. What's uh, 1 divided by 3? I'm just going to put in 1 third. What's 4 divided by 3? I'm going to put 4 thirds, which is 1 and a third. And then finally, what's 9 divided by 3? Oh, that's the only one I get a good one of. So in red, here's how I would plot it. Here's how I graph it. 0 comma 0. We have a shared point there. I'm going to go right over to the 3 comma 3, because that's a nice one. By the way, this 3 created a compression, squished it all that way, which is why this last point has been squished over to there. And then now the other points. A third is very hard to draw. Third comma one is roughly there. And then one and a third uh, comma two. Oh, I got that. I got this one dot wrong. That's three comma three. It's further up there. There we go. Bad drawing too. There we go. And then a third comma one is about there. And then one and a third comma two is about there. And then if I join those, I get a fair idea of what's going on. Not bad. Pretty good. So that's a sketch of that. And then what about this negative 3x? What does that do? So I'm just going to uh, keep these values because I can see the only difference between this square root of 3x and this is the negative, which means I'm just going to multiply all these values that I have here for this one by that. So it's kind of showing you um, what's going on here. Now there's no y transformations in this so that means the only change here is all these will become negative. Now you're going to see what is meant by a reflection in the y-axis. So if all these x values stay negative and all these y values stay the same Notice the first one isn't really, there's no such thing as negative zero. But all of a sudden we have another shared point. Zero comma zero again. And it helps if you label them. Then negative a third comma one is roughly here. Right? Then negative four thirds comma two is roughly here. And then negative three comma three is roughly here. Now notice the red line and the blue line are exactly the same curve exactly the same curve except the blue line because it had that m minus reflected in the y-axis even though it's an x transformation because it's by the x it reflected in the y-axis and that's what it did all the x values here went from positive to negative which is why we, we treat the axis like a mirror and it's not always the y-axis it's whatever the axis of the original curve is so look at that blue and red are identical now what's the only difference with this we still have a minus three 
But then after we're done multiplying, we've got to subtract 1. So that just essentially means I subtract 1 from all these x values. And then suddenly there's a y transformation out of the box. But let's start with all that. After I've done all the multiplication, I then subtract 1. So this 0, so this we'll call this uh, green. So this 0x will become minus 1. And this minus a third will become minus 4 thirds. And this minus 4 thirds will become minus 7 thirds. You can easily come up with that by just adding the denominator to the numerator once. And then this last one, when I subtract 1 from it, is minus 4. But what about all my y values? Well, my y values are uh, suddenly I've got to subtract 4 from them. So it's that 0y becomes negative 4. That 1y becomes negative 3. And that uh, 2y becomes negative 2. And that 3y becomes negative 1. So essentially, what this does is it's going to stretch or compress rather the x values the way this red and blue did. But now the, this blue line is going to not only move down there, left it's going to move left one, it's then going to move down four. So I could actually just take these original values and do that. Go one over here and then four down. And it should be right there. Is it negative one comma four? Negative four? Yes it is. Then I could just take this other value here and go 1 to the left and then 4 down. Is it negative 1 third comma negative 3? Yes, it is. So you could do it that way too because the only thing that changed from here from there is that I've moved all the x values to the left by 1 and all the one y values down by 1. So I didn't even have to make this chart. I could have used all the blue dots and just moved them. But I'm going to use this chart. So in green, minus 1 comma 4 is here. Sorry, minus 1 comma minus 4 is there. Uh, minus uh, uh, 4 thirds comma minus 3 is minus 1 third comma minus 3 is right there. Minus 7 thirds, which is minus 2 and a third, um, comma minus 2 is right here. And then finally, minus 1, comma, minus 4. Oh, yeah, I did that one. Minus 4, comma, minus 1 is right there. And you might say, well, what's going on here? Well, I'll show you. Hang on. Not quite right, but close enough. The new vertex of this blue line went 1 down, 1 to the left, 4 down. And so did all the other points. And that's where the new one's drawn. And this is its new vertex right here. Right there. Notice the vertexes were always whatever we started as the original vertex became the new vertex. And there you go. This one's just teaching you to do it step by step by step, essentially. Explain what transformations would need to apply to the graph of x to graph each of the functions. Okay, so they just want it in words. Okay. Okay, A first. So I'm going to identify, it always helps to identify my y's. There are none. So let's identify my, my, my x's, my x transformations right there. How do I know? Because it's inside the bracket away from f. If it was a y transformation stretch, it'd be out here and out here. Which means I have a third and fourth. Now it's opposite for x's, so I have a, I have a stretch, a horizontal stretch because we're dealing with x of a factor of 3, the reciprocal, and a horizontal translation, which just means move, 4 to the left, not to the right. So what does that mean? It means multiply all your x values by 3, then subtract 4. So essentially the opposite of what's written. And so you do the same thing. Whatever the parent function is, which we don't know in this case, that's what we would do to the original parent function 
three or four or five sp spots we know. Good. What about this one? Okay, and I'm going to identify the um, the y transformations. They're outside the bracket. Now I'm going to identify carefully the x transformations. So in green, I'm going to describe the y transformations and what you do to the y's. I have a vertical because it's y stretch of a factor of 2 and a vertical translation up by 1. Sorry about the misspelling. What does that mean? Multiply all your y values by 2 and then add 1. Okay, what about y x's? Well, x's, we have that negative is called a reflection in the y-axis, even though it's affecting x, and then a horizontal translation, 3 to the right, not to the left, the opposite. So what does that mean? It means I multiply all my x values by minus 1, and then add 3 to them. That's all you do. So that's why you, all, you only need to know the parent functions, and I'm going to leave a link to some of the parent functions down here. Um, because I think I have a, let's see if I have them, um, yeah, it's always good to study the first five main ones. I described their ranges, and then you can just highlight them by clicking them on. So there's the line. Uh, you can skip the cubic. I don't know why that's second. Oh, okay, parabola. You could sort of touch on the cubic, but it's not as important in functions 11 as 12. Absolute function, definitely. The radical, or the root. The reciprocal. And uh, those will come. They're going to come. You're going to have more coming, like a growth curve, decay curve, and all the trig curves. But those are the first five to fool around with. So I'll try to link that in the, uh, in the bio, in the description. And finally, that one has a whole bunch, right? Did we do them all? No, we didn't do them all. So this last one, let's have a look, right? So in green, I'm going to identify the Y transformations. I'm going to just circle both there. And then in red, I'm going to identify the X transformations. There we go. So that means in words, in for the Y transformations, I have a vertical stretch of three and a reflection in the x-axis because it's affecting y. And then I have a vertical translation down by 3. For the x, oh, what does that mean? It means multiply all your y values by minus 3 and then subtract 3. And you'll get your new, new positions. Then just sketch whatever curve it is. For the x-axis, I have a horizontal compression because it's going to come out by a factor of a half and then I have a horizontal translation one to the right what does that mean it means multiply all your x values by a half or if you want divide them by two and then add one so I like multiplying by half. Later on, you'll see why using reciprocal multiplications is easier dividing by half, simply because you can end up in a situation where you have a fraction divided by 2 and then divided by 2 again. And you get this annoying thing. Instead of dividing by 2, if I multiply the first fraction by 1 over 2, it's quite easy. I can even multiply again by 1 over 2, and it's quite easy to see that it comes out as 1 over 8. So I much prefer multiplying by the reciprocal than dividing by 2. It's the same thing. 10 divided by 2 is the same as 10 times 1 over 2. They both come out to 5. Okay, that's number 6. Here's some more, and they want you to practice sketching. I urge you to practice sketching, but I'm not going to do all the sketching. I've pretty much shown you how to come up with the coordinates for a stretch, and it's the same thing over and over again. What's the whole point in repetition? 
so that when you're tested, you won't do as many mistakes. What's the point in testing that way? So that when you work, you don't, won't do as many mistakes. So notice that we're talking about a parabola. So you should always work with the first five, three or five uh, coordinates. So I'm just gonna go with the ones that I know. Minus two comma four, minus one comma one, zero comma zero, one comma one, and two comma four. Okay, so now I'm gonna circle in uh, red, there's the only X transformation, and in green, there's the only Y transformation, which simply, if I'm gonna convert this to sketching, I'm going to add three to Y's, and I'm gonna add two to X's, because it's minus two is the opposite, which means this one becomes zero comma seven, this one becomes, when I add two to the x, I get one comma four. This one becomes two comma three. This one becomes three comma four. And this one becomes uh, five comma, so I got it wrong, four comma seven. And then when I sketch it, right, if I use a sketch pad, I can actually bring my coordinates over. Oh, I accidentally deleted my coordinates. There we go. And I can just bring my new coordinates over and plot them. So 0, 7, right up there. By the way, this was the original uh, vertex, so I expect the vertex to be there. And then you would also keep this in mind, label, you know, put this right there, one comma four, right there, and label. You're gonna get more marks the more precise you are. Two comma three should be my vertex, right there. And then three comma four is gonna be the point on the other side. And then four comma seven is going to be the point up top. Notice that I still have this symmetry. It's still always going to look like a parabola, no matter how I translate it. I'm going to squish it a bit. There we go. Not quite, but good enough. No matter how I translate it, it's always going to have an axis of symmetry that goes through the x value of the vertex. And also notice that each of these points are equidistant from the vertex. That's uh, one away here, one away there. That's two away there and two away there. And the next point up would be three away, three away, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I might keep that over there. Okay. So it helps that I keep the original things because we're working with a parabola each time. And then you just do the same thing. You take it and you identify your X or your Y's and be careful, sometimes it's tricky. And then, now I wanna put in a little warning here because teachers love doing this. They love doing this and I wanna put in a little warning here. You're gonna see this endlessly on your teacher's thing. You're gonna say, oh, there we go. I have a, a horizontal compression of one half and it's gonna be moving left by two, but that's not actually what is going on with this one. Notice that this one has a bracket for the translation and then the multipliers in front, and this one has just a bracket. What's actually going on is I factor a two out of both of these. I factor a two out of both of these and the first one becomes x, and the second one I factor two out becomes that. What's actually going on is indeed it's a horizontal uh, compression of a half, but it's actually moving one to the left, not two to the left. And teachers love writing it like this 
to catch teach, uh, kids. And it's only the X one that this can happen because only the X one has both of them beside each other. The Y ones are separated by a big gap. Teachers love this trick, just love it. So watch out when you don't see a bracket, when you see a number in front of X and there's no bracket, that's not the actual translation. That's the actual compression or stretch, but that's not the actual translation. They love doing that. Okay, so if I look at this one and I identify all the Ys, oh, I, I accidentally did the greens or the Xs in a green, but it's actually there and there. So if I do this very quickly, I'm going to multiply all my Y values by minus one and then add two and I'm going to multiply all my X values by four not one over four it's four over one the reciprocal four and then subtract one so let's start with that for all my X values multiply by four subtract one minus nine Multiply by 4, minus 4, subtract 1. Multiply by 4, 0, subtract 1. Multiply by 4, 4, subtract 1. Multiply by 4, 8, subtract 1. Now let's do all my y values. Multiply by minus 1 and add 2. Okay, 4 is minus 4. Add 2 is minus 2. Uh, 1 multiplied by 4, sorry, by minus 1 is minus, or is, is minus 1. Minus, multiply 1 by minus 1 and then add two okay and then zero multiply but it doesn't matter then uh, add two and then one multiplied by minus one becomes minus one and then add two it'll repeat and then this one will repeat as well so I get these as the coordinates now that I have my five new fresh coordinates all translated I bring them over to my graph paper and I put them on you can always start with the vertex to give yourself some orientation. You should also note that, okay, if I have a minus in front of the leading number like this, my parabola is going to go from upward facing to downward facing because that's a reflection in the x axis. Let's see. So the next one is 3, comma 1. Oh, I guess that's not the, was that the one I was doing? Let's see. Yeah, I should have a reflection in the x-axis. Let me make sure I did it all right. Minus 1, then add 2, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the uh, vertex there, minus 1, comma 2. Minus 5 comma 1 is right there. And then 3 comma 1 is right there. And then minus 9 comma 2 is roughly, let's see, minus 1. Oh, I accidentally put it in the zone. And then 7 comma minus 2 is right there. And then if I do a big old graph of it like that, I'm not going to quite get it. I think I gotta stretch it wider. And yeah, that's close. You get the idea. It's still gotta be stretched wider. And why is it so wide? Well, let's go back and look. This four here created a horizontal stretch, stretched it out like that. This negative flipped it from up to down and then this add two, put it up from the original uh, vertex up to there. And then it also shifted the whole thing one to the left. So if you look at the zero, you can actually follow the steps that's going on. So there's a reflection, then I added two, and then I subtracted one. Yeah, and the zero had got multiplied by four, which did nothing, and then subtracted one. You can trace each of the paths there. So here's one. So it got in the y-axis, it got multiplied by minus 1. So it went down to there. And then add 2. So it came back up. And then the x got multiplied by 4. So it became 4. And then subtract 1. 
So they, all these points can be mapped like that from the original point. You can just walk over to where it's supposed to go now. So there you go. All I needed was three of these points to get this. And then also don't forget, you're going to get extra points for labeling properly. Uh, this one here is over here, up there. This three comma negative three comma one is right, uh, or sorry, yeah, three comma one's over there. Negative one comma two is the vertex, and negative five comma one is this point right here. So you want to label all your points. You can even label your axis of symmetry. It always goes through the x value of the um, vertex, and then you can even make it, you know, dotted you want there and you can even label that it's not a horrible idea x is equal to minus one is the axis of symmetry if you have time if you don't don't do it all right will I sketch all these no but I will explain what's going on there we go uh, with most of them Okay, so what do I do with my all my y values? Here we go. Multiply them all by 0.5. And then uh, subtract 1. What do I do with all my x values? M multiply by 1 third, or divide by 3, whatever you prefer. And then add 4. Go through the same thing we just did to 3 or 4 or 5 points. Map it and figure it out and even put this into Desmos and see if you got it right. So these other ones are the same thing except with the basic new graph. So here they want you to do it for a radical and the radical ones the main points I use are this 0 comma 0 1 comma 1 4 comma 2 and 9 comma 3 and you can even skip 9 comma 3 and then we just do this we just have to do the same identifier so let's start with the x values so that I don't get confused add 1 to all x values and then add 4 to all y's so that's pretty easy for this one it becomes 1 comma 4 it becomes 2 comma 5 it becomes 5, comma, um, 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 6. And it becomes, uh, when I add 1, like 10, and 4, 7. And then you take my your new points. If you want to put the original graph on there, you can. Oh, look at that. So i got to go grab a new one. Put it over here. Make a bit more room. There we go. Maybe even expand it a bit and put it on top. Great. And then I just got to take my new points, bring them over, and map them out. Try not to interfere too much. It's all going to be moved to the right, so it's okay. All right. 1, 4 is here. This is going to be the vertex. 2 comma 5 is here, 5 comma 6 is here, and 10 comma 7 is over here. And then if I draw it, roughly something like that. Not quite. Didn't quite get it. Let's see if I get it like that. Not bad, not great. And then you just got to, there you go. So and then don't forget, you're going to get more points if you label it properly. There you go. You might ask yourself, OK, well, how come um, it can't, uh, it doesn't go further than that? Well. 
keep in mind that if I was to put this into the actual version of this, it would look like this. Like this, okay? What happens when you put, yeah, square root would go right there. This is the actual translation of that from this going through that to that. That's the actual formula. So what would happen if I put 1 in here for x? Well, it becomes 0. Square root of 0, fine. Plus 4, that's why we get 1 comma 4. What happens if I put 0 in here for x? 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Can't do a square root of a minus. Doesn't exist. That's why the graph only exists that way. And as a result, y is only going to be positive because you're always taking square roots of positive numbers, essentially, in this case. And that's the only way it can work. So I'm not going to bother with the rest except to tell you what the translations are. So this one, subtract 3. from all y values and then multiply all x values by minus 2 and then subtract 4 and you'll get your new root and you might say okay well how come this root has a negative x value well because when I add uh, When I add, uh, when I subtract 4 from it, I'm able to create x values that are, oh, actually, no, the x values won't be more than, won't be lower than 4. So taking the 0, 0, when I multiply by minus 2, I get 0, and when I subtract 4, I get minus 4, and the y values, I just subtract 3. So that'll be my new point. <coughs> By the way, this minus creates a reflection in the x-axis, so this is going to go the other route. It's going to go this way. And it's going to start at that point down there. That's what that minus does. It reflects it going to this direction through the y-axis. The negative near the x causes a reflection in the uh, y-axis. Uh, so if I look at it, so it's negative half x plus 4 minus 3. Uh, square root. Negative a half. x minus plus 4 minus 3. You might say, how come uh, plus 4 minus 3 actually? How come I can have a negative number in the square root? Well, if this bracket here comes out negative, I have a negative times a negative, which makes a positive. How do I make this bracket negative? Well, if it was 4, it would be 0. So that works fine, which explains why our vertex starts at uh, 4. Sorry, negative 4. But if I go down to, uh, if I go down to negative 3, this bracket becomes positive and I can't get any square root of, the, and this whole thing becomes negative. So that's why there's nothing to the right of square root uh, negative 4. But if I make this negative 5, plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 times a half is positive a half. So you will see um, uh, negative 5 over here will come out fine. And then you've got to take square root of positive a half, which is, geez, 1 over square root of 2. I won't come up with it, but anyway, we can see it exists. Let's just take a table of values and I'll put in the standard y's. Mm. and then 6 and then 18 maybe Let's see 2 6 yeah let's 
let's just try 20, 1, 2, there we go, that's a good one. And these ones we'll just skip. So you can just see a couple of them there. And you'll discover that if you, you can find all these on the original, and that's the new one. I didn't really prove anything by making that chart. I really just wanted to show you that it was facing the other way now, caused by that. So you should practice them. Uh, for instance, this one has no reflection, so it will... Oh, that's a different graph, sorry. I, I accidentally took this one. Oh, no. Yeah, I accidentally applied one of these to that. Oh, no, I didn't. I don't know what that one is. Where did this one come from? B. I don't see a B anymore. Anyway, yeah, I think I stole it from here. So... So this one is going to be a reflection in the x-axis and in the y-axis. So not only do you head that way, but now you're under here. So it's going to be like that. Well, let's do that one, and I'll show you. What do I do? Oh, do all my y values? All y values I'm going to multiply by minus 2. And add, Jesus, and add 1. All my x values, I'm going to multiply by minus 1 and add 2. So if I take 0, 0 as the first one, multiply uh, it by minus 1 for the x, it's still 0, then add 2, I get 2, and the other one I get 1. If I take the next one, which is 1, 1, and I multiply it by negative 2, I get uh, the x value by negative 1, rather, I get negative 1 and add 2, I get 1. If, if I multiply the y value by negative 2, I get negative 2, and then add 1, I get negative 1. The next one I like to use is 4, 2. If I multiply the x value by minus 1, then add 2, I get minus 2. If I multiply the y value by minus 2, I get minus 4, and add 1, minus 3. And that should be enough to see it. And actually, I can just do it right here. Uh, actually, no, I'll do it right over here. Because it'll be in a total different spot. So it's not these ones. These were the originals. So it's 2 comma 1. Right there. 1 comma minus 1. 1 comma minus 1 right there. I shouldn't have put these here. Hang on. It's not those. 2 comma 1. Sorry. 2 comma 1 right there. 1 comma minus 1, right there, minus 2 comma 3, minus 2 comma minus 3, right there. So I got this weird thing that's going to do this, and I actually needed a couple more to see it a bit better. So let's take 9 comma 2, so 9 comma 2 I have to multiply by uh, minus 1 and add 2, so I'll get minus 7, and then at the, uh, oh no, it was, yeah, it was 9 minus 7, and then the 3 becomes minus 6, and then minus 5, so minus 7 minus 5. So minus 7 comma, my, oh, look at that, I pretty much hit it, it's right over there. So you get this thing right there. So notice that our original is this way, and when I reflected it in the y-axis, it went that way, and then when I reflected in the uh, x-axis, it went that way. And then it moved a little bit to the right and a little bit up. A little bit to the right. Sorry, yeah, a little bit to the right and a little bit up. And that's how it works. And then this one's just an absolute. An absolute is very much like a parabola. It has a vertex and it faces up. If you ever wonder why an absolute is an absolute, if you look at the line, it like it's like this. If you look at an absolute, it's like that. And that's because the negative uh, x values that continue with the line and continue on this thing, the y values get absoluted. All x values are positivized and jump over here. So really an absolute value is a line where all the negative y values are forced up into the positive zone. Make no mistake, though, 
you can have a absolute value that's in the negative zone by making a reflection in the y-axis and or in the x-axis rather and that is because even though after I've made the y value positive I then multiply it by minus one which makes it negative now I have no positive y values I wonder if if it's possible to have Yeah, it is. Okay. And there's the uh, inverse of an absolute value. All I had to do was swap the x and the y's. Learn your inverse as well as well. Okay, so uh, it's the same. It's the same stuff. You multiply here. I'll go through. Multiply all your y values by 2. That's it. Add 3 to all your x values. That's it. Multiply all your y values by 4 and then subtract 2. That's it. Multiply all your x values by a half, not 2, and then add 1. That's it. On this one, multiply all your y values by minus a half and then add 4. Multiply all your x values by a third, or divide by 3, and then subtract 2. And you'll have three points that you can plot, and your graph will look fine. This one has a reflection in the x-axis, so it's going to go from up to down. And then it's going to uh, be squished, or sorry, um, yeah, squished a bit, so it's going to be a bit fatter. Then it's going to be moved up four. And then this third is going to squish it this way, so it's going to get thinner again. And then it's going to be moved left two, so from up here, one, two. So you're going to get something that's up here, like that. This one has no reflections. This one has no reflections. Well, I might have to do this in part twos. Um, yeah. So once you get to the word stuff, it gets a little bit more complicated. Oh, and reciprocals are a little bit tougher, but they're not, they're not too bad. So let's have a look at the reciprocals. Yeah, I'm, I'll probably have to stop this very soon so these are all this here's reciprocal and as you can see only the only thing that's going on is the x values are moving to the right not to the left by two which means if I'm going to graph my reciprocal I know one of the points of my reciprocal are 1 comma 1 and minus 1 comma minus 1 and I know it hugs like that it, it hugs like that. It's hard for me to draw it. And then I also know that this just moves everything to the t to the right by two. So I'm just going to plot instead of one comma two, it's going to be three. Sorry, instead of one comma one, it's going to be three comma one. And instead of negative one comma one, it's going to be one comma negative one. So if I'm going to graph that here, this is what it looks like. It's a lot easier over here. Now I'm going to put the regular one, so that's a Y. Okay, and if I zoom in, you can see here's the original point, 1 comma 1, and it should have moved 2 to the right. There it is, 3 comma 1. Here's the original point here, negative 1 comma negative 1, and it should move to the right, so it should become 1 comma negative 1. And there it is there. And then after that, what happened to the asymptote? Well, or what are these things? When you look at this graph here, that's the parent function. What can't x be down at the bottom? x can never be 0. You can't divide by 0. This creates an asymptote right there. Well, since x can never be 0, y can never come out as 0 in this situation. So you have an asymptote just like that. You have these two asymptotes. In this thing over here, the only thing that happened is all the x values moved to the right. Pretend x is 2 down here. 2 minus 2 can't exist, 1 over 0. So that means the asymptote also moved to the right. Since there's no y translation transformations, the, y, the horizontal transformation, the horizontal asymptote did not move. But the vertical one did. So that means the new vertical one is x is equal to 2. I can re erase this and just let's get rid of this and turn this one on. And sure enough, there's the new asymptote that I'm hugging. You're going to learn more about why it hugs as it gets closer to the asymptotes. But essentially, if you look at the parent graph, oh, by the way, what would happen if I add 3 to this? 
a vertical translation up, well, that means the horizontal uh, asymptote would go up by 3 as well. So you can see that these affect the asymptotes. I'm going to have to stop there, and I will we'll continue later.